Tonight I'm taking a little break from working on the car to do a little bit of refurbishing on this old welder here. As you can see it's an old 230 amp 40 AC only welder and the goal is to turn this into a AC DC welder and to do that I'm going to use this little guy. This is a bridge rectifier rated for 200 amps and 1600 volts. Essentially it's four diodes and it converts AC current to DC current. In order to install this, first thing I'm going to do is take this whole welder apart. It uh, looks like it's been taken apart and put together a few times by somebody in the past. It's got a few different types of screws on it, so I'll just go ahead and get started on that. So this is the first time I've had this thing apart. It's actually quite interesting to see what it looks like inside. Looks like there's a bit of a nest or something down there. Now that I've blown out the decades old dirt that was in there, it's a little bit easier to see how this thing works. It's pretty, not, not much to this actually, it's pretty a pretty straightforward device. Basically what you have here is the input power cable, this is a 200 volt AC power. Comes into the main power switch here. This is just a spring loaded switch, which connects the input of the switch to the output here, this plate. From there, AC power goes through these wires to the primary side of the transformer. As you can see, the primary side has a lot more windings on it, a lot smaller but uh, more densely packed windings than the secondary side, which means on the secondary side you have much lower voltage but much higher current output compared to the input side. And the output of the secondary side of the transformer is down here. It's just connected to the output cables which run through the case and also the leads. There's also this other connection from the output side of the main power switch and it just goes to the cooling fan. To vary the current on this welder, you turn this uh, wheel left or right and with this threaded rod it just moves the core of the transformer in and out of the transformer and that varies the coupling between the primary and secondary side. Pulled one of these leads out where it connects to the secondary side of the transformer and it looks like it's it's just screwed on there with a bolt-on connector and it's wrapped up in what appears to be hockey tape. Not even electrical tape, so whoever put this together last probably replaced these leads and just put it together with whatever they have and have left over sitting around. And this being Canada, everybody has hockey tape. So I managed to get these bulkhead connectors out. Bit of a struggle, but the cable looks like the braid is okay. It's just the insulation that's damaged, so looks like that'll be able to be fixed with some heat shrink. So let's talk for a sec about this bridge rectifier that I'm using to convert this to a DC welder. This is a MDQ 200A 1600 volt. Um, four diode bridge rectifier and I said at the beginning that this converts AC current to DC current. Now that's not entirely true, at least it's not the whole story. Let me quickly explain why. So for those who don't know, AC current on a time scale looks something like this where you have your, your voltage on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. DC current, ideally, would look like this. That's your electro-positive, this would be your electro-negative. Now what the bridge rectifier does is it basically allows current to flow only in one direction. So it takes this negative part of the wave, of the AC wave, and flips it around. So what you end up with is something that looks like that, which obviously is not your ideal DC current that you want here. In order to go from this to this, 
what you need is an additional couple pieces. You need a choke coil, which is effectively an inductor, and you need uh, a capacitor. So I'll show you what this circuit should look like when this whole thing is finished. First of all, our AC welder can be represented as just a simple AC voltage source here. And we have this running to our bridge rectifier. So basically the way this bridge rectifier works is we have the positive uh, side of the current coming out of your AC source here, runs through here to your positive source, back through your negative source, and back to the negative side of the voltage rectifier, or the uh, voltage source. And then when this flips around, you have your positive current flowing through here, again into the, your positive uh, side of the DC output, back in through the negative, and through here. And this basically produces this wave down here. In order to get from this to your ideal DC current, you need to add basically just an inductor here. Actually, this should be on the positive side. And a smoothing capacitor. What you'll end up with is something a little bit closer to this ideal DC current. Actually, what you'll probably end up with is something that looks a little bit like that. So it'll have a little bit of ripple, but it's close enough. All right, so I've made my little mounting plate for the uh, bridge rectifier. Basically, just cut this piece out of a chunk of quarter-inch aluminum plate with a hacksaw. Okay, I didn't really do it with a hacksaw, I did it with an angle grinder. Then I drilled and tapped these four holes to accept 1032 screws to mount the bridge rectifier. And I drilled and countersunk these holes to attach this to a couple of wooden blocks to act as a base. The plan is to eventually have this sitting down in here. If the AC uh, transformer leads attached to the AC side of the uh, rectifier and the DC leads coming out through the case. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to connect this out here, connect the leads up to it, and give it a roll.
Now I had to get this up to 140 amps to run a continuous arc, which is this one here. It's obviously a little bit too hot. This one I managed to run at about 115 on the indicator. The, uh, the package says 80 to 100 amps for these rods, but I think the, uh, the current setting on that welder is not very accurate. So, But I was able to run it on 8th inch mild steel, which on AC and that current setting it would just blow right through, so this is obviously a little bit more of a positive outcome.